Hi, thank you for coming to our channel. Today I'm going to show you how you can control the position of a brushless AC or brushless DC motor with Solomini or Solono or basically any other type of our products using CanOpen and Arduino as well as uh, Solo on the other side. So the process will be very simple. You, the only thing you will need is installing our Arduino library in your uh, Arduino directory and then through one of these CAN shields that you can see here, you can communicate with Solo through the CAN bus and Solo can take or give you the commands and feedbacks through this way of communication. And it's a very robust communication. You can uh, reliably communicate under harsh conditions with Solo. So as you can see, the wiring is pretty simple. I'm having three wires here coming from the CAN shield, which is on top of an Arduino Uno to, to my Solo. It's CAN high, CAN low, and ground. I'm having the encoder wiring of the permanent magnet synchronous motor that I'm having here connected to Solo. It's already calibrated. I found the wiring. Everything is already done. And I know this configuration works in torque, speed, and also position mode. So I'm not going to talk about how to configure Solo. We have a video and tutorial about that. The only thing we are going to focus here is we're going to define some profiles for Solo to follow a sinusoidal profile and a step profile. And here I'm going to put the motor under load. So you can see here we have a load here. We have a hysteresis brake that is applying load while the motor is moving under position control. So the code is actually following the same pattern of the codes that you can find in our Arduino library online. We have many examples for that. So I just took a bit one of them to provide you the possibility of having various profiles. So the, the code starts by defining some initial values, like the values for the address of the solo, some other parameters like PWM frequency, number of poles, and the gains of the controllers, the speed controller and position controller, current limit, and some other parameters. And then it goes on by initializing the serial port for just monitoring purposes, if you want to monitor something on your PC. And then continuing with initialization of the CAN module. So here you can see I'm defining pin number 9 of my Arduino to select the chip that converts SPI to CAN. It's, a, it's an MCP chip that is doing the job for us here. And then after establishing the, com the communication with Solo, we do the motor identification and the rest of the settings, including the switching frequency, current limit, and, and so on. I'm not going to focus on this part of the code because we've talked a lot about this part. The only thing I'm going to focus is the loop part of the code. So in the loop, I'm having a, a simple homing action. So first of all, I make sure my motor is at zero reference or zero position in the beginning. So in the other part of the code, I'm just creating a position reference in sign mode that I'm feeding to Solo to follow this sign wave type of position reference for a couple of times. And then I will proceed to giving a step responses. So we will see together what happens when I run the code and how is the behavior of Solo. To see what actually is happening, I'm going to take advantage of Motion Terminal, which is a powerful tool, especially for monitoring. So to do that, I get connected to Solo through the native USB on Solo. So while Arduino is sending commands and receiving data from Solo through CAN bus, I'm monitoring it here through my USB cable. So I got connected to my unit. I have all the parameters that are already set by Arduino into it. I'm not going to touch any of them. I just want to go down running the performance monitoring here. I'm going to put my focus for now on position and I'm going to run my Arduino code. So Arduino comes to the circuit right now. It will start by doing the motor identification and then starting a profile. So you can see the sign profile starts and then it will be followed by a step profile in the next part of the plot. So this cyclic motion is going to continue forever. I can have many arbitrary signals or types of uh, references to follow. So now I'm going to take a look at the speed actually feedback. 
So you can see the speed has more or less the same sinusoidal shape. It's being controlled with a very high quality. For instance, if I stop the monitoring here, you can see the speed references in the sinusoidal are being limited to the 6000 RPM that I set here here in this part of the code so it, it doesn't mean that the speed will be 6000 at any point no it's actually a speed limit so the, this can be varying depending on the need of the controller but here you can see the speed is controlled depending on the profile and then in the step profile I have my speed that is kind of settling down at 2000 rpm because in my code here in the step section I put the speed limit at 2000 rpm so in following the step profile I want to have a fixed 2000, 2000 rpm speed limit but for sign the story is different you can see here the speed is being controlled after a while there is a little overshoot due to the gains but it's pretty precise it goes to positive 2000 rpm and negative 2000 rpm here because i changed the sign of my profile to positive 80,000 to negative 80,000. and this thing will continue over and over again my sign shape is going to come and then the step response you can have a look at the iq as i told you i'm actually putting load on the shaft of my motor so i'm already having 160 milliamps of current injected into my brake which will result in 0.1 newton meter almost and you can see there is a load and the current is actually being controlled on the profiles so you see the current in the sinusoidal profile is having this type of shape and in the step profile it has more like a step, a step type of shape so that was the whole idea of controlling the position with a profile type of referencing. You can see we have three components in the whole story of controlling of the motor, torque, the speed and position. In this example, the only thing that we cared about was position, the reference of the position. But you can see the speed and torque are also affected by the references. And this is thanks to the field oriented control that is offered on Solo which provides you a very high performance profile tracking and in near future we're going to release PVT algorithms to be able to follow specific profiles for a speed position based on the time of the profiles please subscribe to our channel we will provide you weekly materials and keep you updated about the progress of solo thank you so much